Hello, everyone. My name is Jenny Clark, and this is my husband, Chris. Welcome. You did it. <laughs> Congratulations not only to your kids, but to you as well. It is no small, yeah. <laughs> It is no small accomplishment to get your kids this far in life. So take this moment to appreciate all of their hard work and all of yours. Only two more trips to Target and you're done. <laughs> <laughs> Wake Forest is the best, one of the best universities in this country, in the world. It is an amazing place and you and your child are going to have a wonderful time here. Good evening. On behalf of the Wake Forest Parents Council, we are thrilled to welcome you here tonight, the parents and family of the members of the class of 2026. As I hope you all are experiencing, family members of Wake students are very important members of the university community and are crucial to building and sustaining our very special culture. We like to say, when your students are accepted to Wake Forest, you're accepted as well. But don't worry, no reading, no exams, only the good stuff. Like you, Jenny and I are Wake Forest parents. Our oldest daughter, Charlie, graduated in 2021, and our middle daughter, Sammy, just graduated this May. Our third and youngest daughter, Lulu, is a member of the incoming class of 2026. We promise it was her choice. <laughs> we have loved being Wake Forest parents for the past five years and are so glad that Lulu is here to give us four more years with this wonderful institution. Unfortunately, Lulu has given us very limited visitation rights, which is pretty smart because we'd probably be here all the time. As we hope you already know, and we can certainly attest, Wake Forest is truly an outstanding institution achieving excellence in all areas of the college experience. One aspect that we admire most is Wake's commitment to pairing world-class academics with a commitment to serving humanity. As you will learn in the days and years ahead, Wake's motto, Pro Humanitate, is a central theme in university life and provides an important compass your students will use as they navigate life at Wake Forest and beyond. Another aspect we have really appreciated about our children's Wake Forest experience is seeing how all the branches of the university are committed to helping students be their best selves and feel supported in every aspect of their lives at Wake. The character and dedication of the faculty and administration is both admirable and exceptional. You will get a good sense of that from tonight's speakers. We encourage you to get to know the Office of Family Engagement. They serve as an important contact point for parents and families, providing information and support around all aspects of campus life. You can visit their website at parents.wfu.edu or email parents at wfu.edu. Speaking from experience, they really care about your students and want to help them and you succeed in this sometimes challenging but amazing journey that lies ahead. In addition, the Wake Forest Parents Council is here for you as an extension of the university's commitment to communicating and informing families about university matters. The council meets periodically with the administration to consider issues of significance to Wake, serves as liaison to families, and leads the annual parents campaign which provides vital finance, financial support to the university and to which we hope you will all consider contributing. Okay, it is now our great privilege to introduce Wake Forest University President, Dr. Susan R. Wente. Dr. <laughs> Dr. Wente is Wake's 14th president and a distinguished university professor of biology and biochemistry. Prior to coming to Wake Forest, she was a faculty scholar and administrator at Washington University in St. Louis, and most recently Vanderbilt University in Nashville, 
where she served as department chair, associate vice chancellor for research, provost and vice chancellor of academic affairs, and interim chancellor. Dr. Wente has gained a reputation for thoughtful, future-oriented leadership focused on academic excellence, institutional growth, and inclusivity. Dr. Wente grew up in Iowa, receiving a scholarship to the University of Iowa, where she earned a Bachelor of Science degree in biochemistry and first discovered her passion for biomedical research. She received her PhD in biochemistry at the University of California, Berkeley, and was a postdoctoral fellow at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center and Rockefeller Center in New York. Dr. Wente, I'm always amazed at how much we have in common. <laughs> Throughout her career, Dr. Wente has maintained an unwavering commitment to research and teaching, mentoring dozens of students and postdoctoral fellows along the way. Her research has focused on understanding the mechanisms and pathways within living cells, specifically those between a cell's nucleus and cytoplasm. She has authored or co-authored more than 100 peer-reviewed research articles and served on editorial boards for leading academic journals in her field. A pioneer of team-based cross-disciplinary research, Dr. Wente's discoveries have laid the foundation for new medicines and treatments, as well as inspiring her distinctive philosophy of leadership. From tissues and organs to university programs and initiatives, Dr. Wente appreciates the fundamental role that teamwork and communication play in thriving structures and institutions. Collaboration is also a central theme to her vision of leading Wake Forest as a university strives to be an ever more impactful catalyst for good in the world. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Wente. Well, thank you so much, Jenny and Chris, for that introduction. It was wonderful to hear you get that cytoplasm correct in there. And thank you to all of our Parents Council members who have joined us here tonight. And I am just thrilled to be here with all of our parents and families. We're going to begin a new chapter, a new chapter this week in your students' lives. Some of you I recognize from pre-orientation. You came back. You couldn't stay away, right? Some of you we might have met in different places and times, but for all of you, I am going to be looking forward to connecting with you over the next four years. I've served as Wake Forest 14th president for just a little over a year now. So like most of you, I'm still relatively new to Wake Forest. I'm still learning new things, making discoveries, still asking questions getting lost in Tribble, especially, which you will learn from your students, even when they're seniors, they get lost in Tribble. What I learned very, very quickly is that this is a very special place. As the Clarks noted, our incredible faculty and our amazing staff are so devoted to each of our students in a way that I have not seen at any other institution before. There's a sense of community that is intentionally fostered here among students, between students and faculty, between students and support staff. This is something that we are very proud of. This is something that we feel makes Wake Forest distinguished amongst its peers and it's something that we are vigilant about maintaining. I also want to add that I've been recently in your shoes. My husband, Chris, and I are both the parents of two daughters who are in their 20s, and the younger of which just finished undergraduate in May of 21. It seems like only yesterday I can close my eyes and I can think of what it was like to, to drop each of them off in their respective different schools starting out on their journeys. There was joy. There was fear. There was excitement. There was anticipation. There was nostalgia. 
Those were just some of the feelings that I'm sure you are sensing right now, too. We can make a long list. Yes, frustration with Target is probably one of them, okay? <laughs> so we have to find a way around that, maybe. If you've got a, if you've got a younger sibling who's going to start, start thinking ahead to how, to how to solve for that. Your students are also adjusting. So you are not alone in terms of the newness of, of what their adventure means in your own lives, but also for what they're going to experience here. Their feelings as they adjust to life in a residence hall, as they meet new people, as they manage their own time, as they take challenging classes, it's a balancing act for them. And it is completely normal, and I know you appreciate this, that finding so many things to be new can be hard. Now, as noted by the introduction, my academic background is in biochemistry. And for decades, I studied the inner workings of those cells. And when you glance under a microscope, which I'm sure many of you have done, I won't make you raise your hands if you have, OK? But when you look under that microscope at a cell, everything could appear to be chaotic. There are millions of molecules and chemical reactions going on every single second. But in the midst of all that frenetic activity, there's also structure. There's communication, there's collaboration, and what I would say is it's actually what thriving looks like. I believe your student is going to thrive here because amidst all the newness, all the excitement, all the activity, all the revelry, there is structure, there is communication, and there is collaboration. So as everyone acclimates to our new community, let me share with you three of our commitments, our commitments to Wake Forest parents and families. First, we are your partners. We are your partners in preparing your student for life after college. We're thinking ahead. Like you, we want what's best for them. And we also want to give them opportunities to grow as people. We'll be actively encouraging them every day that they're here to explore all sorts of different areas of study and to discover what inspires them. Second, we will know your student and they will know how to connect with us. We're going to strive to support them, and you're going to hear this in the panel discussion, in all facets of their life, from personal well-being to academic discovery. Whether that support is found in the University Counseling Center, or if it's found through extracurricular activities, or with tutoring in the Writing Center, our faculty and staff will collaborate to create an engaging culture of holistic growth for your student. Through knowing your student, we also want to empower them to navigate challenges on their own. But don't worry, we have an extensive safety net, and that safety net includes a partnership with you, you as parents and families, because you will always be key parts in their lives. Nothing about this move-in changes that. So we will be your partners. We will know your students. And finally, we are committed to communicating as effectively as possible. We understand there needs to be a free flow of accurate information between us as well as a commitment to transparency. How and why we're making decisions is just as important as what those decisions are. So if you haven't already, please sign up. Shouldn't be the first time you've heard this. I could say, please sign up for what? And you should say, the Daily Deek, OK? This is a daily blog that's a true gift to Wake Forest parents and families, and it gives a glimpse into life on campus 
tips for navigating college and insight into the Wake Forest experience. Now, as part of this communication commitment, tonight you're going to be introduced to several key leaders in our academic and campus life community. These people interact with your student on a daily basis. Now, we're going to use a panel discussion. You can see the chairs up here because we are big believers in open dialogue, personal engagement, and learning through conversation. So as I hand it over to Dr. James and Dr. Chapman, let me give you one final thank you on this first official time we're gathering together for being here. Let me thank you for trusting us with your student. We are so glad to welcome you to the Wake Forest family, and I look forward to meeting you many, many times over the upcoming years, but especially you'll have that opportunity tonight outside the Wake Chapel doors after tonight's discussion. I'll be available there um, for introductions. So let's get on with the program. Thank you, President Wente. We are so grateful for your leadership. It's been phenomenal working with you for the last year, and I look forward to your leadership over the next few years. Um, before we get started, I want to take a moment uh, to thank and acknowledge colleagues from all over campus who have made this day and this next few weeks possible. If I have any faculty and staff in the room, I would like you to take a stand so you can be acknowledged. And for our parents, um, not everyone was able to be here today, but certainly they have spent so much time uh, preparing for these last few days. Um, so can we take a moment? So we have colleagues all across campus who have been here all day, several nights this week, trying to prepare for today. So if you had a great day so far, um, it's going to get even better for your students and for you over the next four years. So my name is Dr. Sharice James. I'm the Director of Orientation. Uh, your students have been hearing from me probably since March 2022. Um, because I've been thinking about them and planning for them uh, for the last few months, making sure that every I is dotted and every T is crossed. This day has been very important to all of us, to all of my colleagues, and it's been a joy and my pleasure to be able to see this come to fruition. Tonight is very special. I have the opportunity to share the stage with so many colleagues who are going to share their pro tips with you and their moments of wisdom um, and the moments in which they've helped and supported students um, to not only thrive, but certainly overcome challenges they have had. Before we go on, it is my utmost pleasure to introduce you to my dear friend, um, we don't often get the chance to work with people that we absolutely adore, but it's been my pleasure to not only know Betsy Chapman as a colleague, but we became classmates several years ago. So we navigated the doctoral process together, and that has just made our collegial relationship so much stronger. Many of you have seen the Daily Deke, read the Daily Deke, you have received those Monday notices um, as you were preparing to move to campus. And so she is the mastermind behind that experience. And so it is my pleasure to introduce you to Dr. Betsy Chapman. Many, many thanks to, to Dr. James and also Dr. Wente for those, those kind words about our communication. So I am the Daily Deke, you might know me as that, and but I'm really Betsy. <laughs> mm. 
And if you can believe this, 34 years ago, my parents were somewhere in this chapel while I was at my hall meeting. Um, back in the day, young women lived on the south side of campus where your students are now, and young men lived on the quad. So for those of you who have students in Bostwick, Babcock, or Collins, I've lived in all of those places, and I can attest that they are eminently livable. So, um, <laughs> and I got married right down there, as a matter of fact. But I, I have worked at Wake Forest for 23 years. I'm a two-time alumna. And um, it's my pleasure, thank you. It, it's my pleasure to um, have you all here tonight, and especially to hear from our, our wonderful colleagues. So as a longtime Wake Forester, both as a student and an administrator, I have been able to see firsthand the amazing work done by the colleagues we'll meet in a minute, as well as so many others, the wonderful staff in the Office of Family Engagement, whose job it is, along with mine, to help you feel like you have a doorway into Wake Forest where you need it. While I am mostly a, a communications person and I work with our websites and things, we have a wonderful series of colleagues who do events and other things in the Office of Family Engagement. Most of all, we want you to feel that this is a personal institution, that we know you, that you know us, you can be as engaged as you wish to be, and we want the same things for your students to thrive here. So I'm so thrilled that you're gonna be meeting these wonderful folks tonight, and I'll turn it back to Dr. James. For our format tonight, you will hear from some of our key leaders who oversee academics, residence life and housing, and campus life. We have taken your questions in advance and culled the most frequently asked ones for tonight. And we will cover some key topics we want you to know about. Let me quickly introduce you to our panelists and ask um, that they come to their seats and they're gonna be um, not only providing their overview, um, certainly want to start with some introductions. So Dr. Um, Matthew Clifford, he is the Assistant Vice President of Campus Life and Dean of Residence Life. Thank you. Dr. Th yep. Thanks, Sharice, yeah. for, uh, for the intro. Um, as, as Dr. James said, my name is Matt Clifford. I've been, uh, had the pleasure to serve um, as the Assistant VP for Campus Life. I've been at Wake Forest for 12 years. Yay. Uh, that's right. I, I am basking in the glory of your transition. I am, my triplets have just navigated driver's ed, um, <laughs> which seems like the, the tallest mountain in the world. Um, so I, I, I feel the transition that you are also navigating as well. Uh, I certainly have to, again, work most closely with Residence Life and Housing and Campus Recreation um, at Wake Forest, and, and especially in terms of Residence Life and Housing, um, really want to, again, as Dr. Wenzi said, be partners with you and be partners with your students as they create a home here um, and, and find out what, and try to evoke the, the most positive elements of home um, while they are here at Wake Forest for their four years. Thanks. Next, we have Dr. Shea Kid Brown, Vice President for Campus Life. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm so excited to be here and so appreciate the opportunity to meet many of you. I got to see lots of you as you were unloading this, this morning and um, certainly have connected with lots of you in our virtual receptions and in-person receptions. So I am also a first year, like your student, so I've been here 225 days. And uh, I'm counting up, not counting down, so there's a, a story to that, that that maybe will come up a little later. But um, as Vice President for Campus Life, I work really closely <laughs> with Matt and, and really everyone on the stage to um, make sure that this is a place where you feel like your student matters and belongs, that they find connection, that they find meaning and purpose here. And so the division of Campus Life is made up of nearly 250 people who are dispersed, um, many of which on stage, but also uh, throughout the campus. So as you think about what's most important to your student right now, um, 
food, clothing, and shelter. We do not oversee food, um, um, but housing, shelter, um, safety, security, those sorts of things on campus. We really work to connect um, your student in that way. And I work really closely with my colleague that you're gonna hear about, but in connecting, providing that connective tissue on campus, so as your students learn whatever it is they're learning in the classroom, we really wanna be partners, not only with you, but with faculty and with your students and make meaning of, of those things. So I'm delighted to be here and also look forward to learning alongside them as it's my first fall in the forest as well. Thank you. Next, next, we have Dr. Michelle Gillespie, our provost. Thank you, Cherise. It's an absolute. <laughs> it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you all. Uh, in the, across the summertime, I sort of wait with bated breath, right, to to make sure everything is ready, that we have enough sections in our, uh, in our courses, and I love to look across the campus and see the ways that our facility staff makes everything beautiful, paints everything. I think we all up here were holding our breath when we looked at Boswick and Johnson, right? <laughs> we wanted everything to be perfect for you when we got here. So we're so happy you're here. We're so happy you entrusted your, your children with us. Uh, we care deeply about them, and we will make sure they thrive across these four years. And we're going to be so proud of them across their lifetimes, in fact, uh, when they're demon deacon graduates. So I'm a historian. I've been a historian at Wake Forest for 23 years, and I'm also provost. I've been a provost for 48 days. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I know you're saying, what does a provost do, right? Nobody knows quite what a provost does. A provost is the chief academic officer of a university. So my responsibility, as Shay implied, is to make sure our faculty and staff provide the very best formal education, classroom education, learning experiences uh, for our students as they declare their, do their liberal arts learning, as they declare their majors, and as they get their degree. But but Shay is absolutely right. We care deeply about our students in, in, in learning in a whole way. So we partner. We partner with everyone up here to make sure our students can learn well, can learn successfully, can learn happily all along the way. Um, I work with incredible faculty and colleagues who are deeply, deeply dedicated to your children and your students are amazing. We will love to educate them. We love to be with them. We learn from them. We grow with them uh, and we think we uh, help send them out into the world to make the world a much better place. And that's just a pride and joy for us all to do. Thank you. Nicole. <laughs> Next, we have Dr. Jose Vialba, our Chief Diversity Officer and VP of Diversity and Inclusion. Thank you very much, Dr. James, and welcome to all of you, or in my native language, bienvenidos a todos ustedes, especially our Hispanic families. Um, my name is Jose Vialba, and I've been at Wake Forest for 11 years. Um, it has been an interesting journey for me. I came here as a professor. Uh, Provost Gillespie and I talk about it. She's the historian who develops a need for context. I'm a counselor by training who also develops a need for context as well. Um, what we do in the Office of Diversity and Inclusion is to provide programming, to influence policies, and to elevate practice. It's interesting as Dr. Wente was talking about the three hopes that she had for your students. She mentioned that they will be known by us. We will know your students. We will also help them know themselves. And I think it's such a huge part of the college experience for students to know a little bit about themselves and what makes them tick and where they come from. Um, we have a few words for that in Spanish. One of those words is ganas, or to have this motivation or desire to know about someone. But one of the other words that I guess grounded me a lot was this notion of empatia or empathy, right? And I promise those are the only Spanish words I'll teach you today. Uh, no slang or curse words either. This is strictly a chapel and we will keep it classy. But we will also make sure that your students are challenged in a way that, um, that will really enrich their lives. Uh, we'll talk a little bit later about what each of our offices does individually, but I wanna uh, repeat what has already been said there's so much collaboration and partnership, 
And as Dr. Wente was talking about those cells that look to be in some chaotic spin of confusion, they all know exactly what they're doing because they're communicating and they're working in partnership. And that's really what our office does, but that's really what all of our offices do. So again, thank you so much for being here tonight and I look forward to uh, this dialogue. Perfect. Interesting that we have the two counselors next to each other. <laughs> so next we have Dr. Warrenetta Mann, our Director of Counseling. Good evening. Good evening and welcome. I am Dr. Warrenetta Mann and I am a licensed clinical psychologist and I serve as the University Counseling Center Director here at Wake Forest. I too have been here a little over a year. I got here just before Dr. Winty and cleaned her desk off so that she would be ready to go. Um, on behalf of my colleagues in the Student Health Service and the Office of Wellbeing, we serve as the area of health and wellness. And our job is to make sure that your students remain physically, mentally, emotionally, and socially healthy to engage in all the wonderful things that my colleagues here have planned for them to engage in while they're here. We are really glad that you're here and that you joined us this evening, and we look forward to speaking with you as well later. I'm going to tell a tale out of school, and that is that Warrenetta and I both have seniors in high school, so this is a fraught time for us. We are very closely going to be in, in your seat, so this is all becoming imminently real right now. So um, one thing you may notice is that your students are going in one direction for much of the orientation programming, and our parents and families are going in another, and that's intentional to help both give you space and to provide information that you, that you need. What your students are doing right now is they're in a required hall meeting with their resident advisor or their RA. So I'm going to scream across the void over here to Matt and ask him to tell you a little bit about residents' life. What are they doing in their hall meetings? How did we pair our roommates? How do we foster community on this campus through the residential experience? Dr. Clifford. Absolutely. Happy to talk about that. So <clears throat> as um, Dr. Chapman noted, your students are in those their first floor meetings right now, they are, they're doing icebreakers, um, they're forming those first initial connections. Hopefully later tonight they'll, they'll join into our res hall crawl um, where they'll be able to um, bounce among a few different of the buildings and go to the activities there being sponsored in those buildings. But they're working, the, creating those first initial um, connections with one another, the connective tissue as it were, um, to create a supportive residential environment. So when you touch base with your student, um, ask them what they're, what they're noticing. Um, this, this act of noticing, act of, of processing, uh, learning as it were, is a really important um, task for them and they'll do that in the classroom of course, but we, we want them to do that outside of the classroom. There's a lot of valuable information that their RA shared with them, so prompt them in a bit of reflection to ask them you know, what they noticed and what they took away from that. Um, we've mentioned, so I mentioned one role that's critical in the residential environment, that's their resident advisor. I'll circle back and talk a little bit about the importance of that, that position and that um, in your student's life. The RA is also supported by a community director um, and graduate hall director, and those, those graduate hall directors and community directors work closely with your students um, and the RAs in the building to create community, to create a space where, again, that home that we're really um, encouraging, and, and we know your student is on that, that journey to create. We, um, we work closely with our, our staff, work closely together to create um, this community, and we really look at um, kind of a, it's a, a, a specific community engagement model where they are providing, again, ARIs are providing information, they're looking for um, opportunities for the floor and the building to gather, and the ARIs will also meet at least once per, some, per month uh, in an intentional connection with your student. That's not just dropping by to say hello. They are intentionally connecting with your student at least once a month and checking in on them, seeing how they're doing, what are they, what are they navigating, what are they, cha what are they challenged by. Um, so it's again, it's a critical role for, uh, for our work. And they're really focusing, our communities are really focused on fostering connection fostering discovery and curiosity, um, and support as well. In terms of support, again, we have a 
a, and you'll hear this from other colleagues, just a really robust network of support for, for your students. One, of, one important element of that supportive and connective tissue is our faculty fellows. Um, we have fabulous faculty members at Wake Forest, and for each building has four faculty fellows and they are assigned to that building. Hopefully when you're moving, uh, when you're moving in, you had an opportunity to meet some of them. Um, and and you will, your student will have continued opportunity over the course of the year to meet and engage with those faculty members to build relationships outside the classroom as well as inside the classroom. New this year um, is an intentional layering of academic advising and support in the residential environment. We're really, uh, really excited about that. The, the advi advising groups, and your students will meet, um, will, will meet and interact with advising groups tomorrow, oh, Friday, thank you, Friday. Um, and those advising groups have been, to the extent possible, assigned by residents. And so as a result, your student will have this opportunity to, again, with these, with these additional layers of support, have um, increased connection with their advising group because of the proximity um, in, in, in their residence. Um, so we're really excited about that uh, opportunity. I want to circle back to the RAs ever so briefly. Um, I like to think of our RAs, again, these are undergraduate students. They are selected. Uh, it's a very competitive process. They are a, one, of our pre one of the preeminent leadership roles um, at Wake Forest. I like to think of them as the connectors in chief. Um, so they are, again, right now, working on work, uh, forming those connections and helping your students form connections with each other. They're also there to help connect your students to resources. So I want to make sure that, um, that again, whether those are they, they have other friends who they can connect the, your students to, or other offices um, as well. I want to talk a little bit about um, roommates and and how how those are matched and what what may happen if um, if if a roommate issue isn't um, the the rosiest, uh, I'll say, um, but. Again, on our, on our staff, our, our community directors, our RAs, they are there to help your student diagnose issues that are arising and think creatively with them about solutions. Unfortunately, they are not mind readers. We're working on it, but they're not mind readers. So it's really, really critical that you prompt your student to reach out to their community staff and um, connect with them before something goes awry. Um, now, the, the vast majority of our roommate relationships, and, and I don't want to focus just on a roommate relationship as something that might go sour, the connect with, encourage your students to connect with the community staff um, to help them problem solve. But roommate relationships, the vast majority of them, turn out really well. We are, our process is really not in, designed or built to help your student find a lifelong friend although that may, that may certainly come. We really are trying to match your student with someone who they can live well with. So our, our questionnaire is designed to look at really living preferences. Or is your student a night owl? Or are they an early riser? Do they study in the room? Do they think they'll study elsewhere? Uh, things of that nature. And we, we match the students together. Now despite the matching process, um, all students should work on a roommate agreement. That's also, start, some of that will start tonight. And that will help them navigate a set of questions and come to consensus on what, what the two of them will agree on in that space. But sometimes roommate issues emerge. And again, please, please, please make sure your student elevates this to their RA or the community staff before it feels necessary. Um, really before it feels necessary. Our staff are really well trained to help mediate conflicts, but if a roommate situation gets to the point where it's so it's really toxic, then um, it, our options are limited, and we want to again be on the front of helping your student navigate those challenges. Now, I do want to end with some. I said the word toxic, so that might ah, um, <laughs> cause some some fear to set in, fear, anticipation, anxiety, um, all together. I do want to close with some context. We have about 1,400 stu first-year students. Um, a lot of roommate pairs um, in, embedded in that. So last year, for the entire academic year, 30 weeks or so, we did 20 room changes for first-year students. So again, we, we, we want to be able to help your student navigate challenges. 
We'll, change, we'll make changes if needed, but the vast majority of these things, of uh, roommate relationships, work out for the best. So I will close with some context. Thank you, Dr. Clifford. So next, I'm gonna look across the aisle um, at Dr. Mann. Um, our next question is, um, what is the best advice on how to support first-year students from many miles away? So here at Wake Forest, you, we like to say that you can't walk 10 feet without um, finding someone who wants to help you. From the front desk in the Benson Center to the front desk in the Center for Wellbeing, your students will find people who will not only help them fi find their way, but help them find themselves. They don't have any idea what this journey will hold for them. There will be a lot of challenges and surprises that even you might not anticipate for them. But we've been doing this for a while and we know what this journey is gonna be like. We've anticipated everything. And for those things that we haven't anticipated, there's all of us who will get around the table and figure it out. We know and prepare for all the things that are coming and what we also know, like VPK Shay said, is that all the things that they learned about this week, they'll forget. So one of the most important ways that you can help them is to help them to remember. Help them to remember that this week, you heard about the helpers, the places of support, the network that exists on this campus to help them navigate all the things that they're gonna encounter. When you get that call or text for help, point them in our direction. Part of their education in and out of the classroom is learning to use their resources to get support. We're the experts here, and we are experts in student development. We know that a first year needs something different from a fourth year and a second year doesn't want the same thing that a third year does. And so in these early days, over the next few weeks, we particularly pay attention to what our first year students need. We help them acclimate, connect, and get what they need on this campus. From the Office of Student Engagement, they will learn um, to pick their people and their passions. From the Office of Wellbeing in our chaplain's office, they will be guided through some of their most important life decisions that will build character. When anxieties and temperatures are high, the University Counseling Center and the Student Health Center are here to patch them back up so they can get back going on their journey. And in addition to our professional staff, Matt talked about our resident advisors. We also have student mental health ambassadors and a lot of peer educators that are here because your students will listen to other students in times where they won't listen to any of us. We know in these first few weeks, there will be homesickness, but there'll be freedom. There will be some loneliness and great friendship. The experiences that your students will have here in our classrooms and out will be transformative. And that's what this journey is all about. So the way that you help them is to push them to engage and take their journey. That is excellent advice. So we all know that academics is at the center of the college experience. It's why your students are here to learn. And so I'm gonna to turn to Provost Gillespie and ask her to talk about academic advising and how faculty help students engage academically at Wake Forest. Absolutely, thank you, Betsy. Well, when we sit here and we hear and you see what these wonderful colleagues are doing, you can, you can understand why Academics is so well, well supported here. As President Wente spoke earlier about the cellular chaos, she said within that cellular chaos, there is incredible structure. And what you're hearing is the incredible structure that we have 
created for your students. And you're also seeing here the kind of collaboration that is part and parcel of everything that we do. And then there's one more piece, and that is communication. And we know how important that is. And it also means we have to ask you for a little bit of help here on the communication side in these first couple of weeks, especially as we help our students learn about the academic world at Wake Forest. You know already that we have wonderful faculty and staff all across the campus. And they take on roles as important academic advisors. They are here for your students. But the one place where we need you to give some pushes is to encourage your students to take advantage right, of these staff and faculty advisors. So we really, really want to encourage you uh, to remind them, as Juanita said, about all the resources that are here and to encourage them, As and I say this, as the mother of two sons, uh, uh, particularly for those of you who have sons out there, you do need to push them a little bit more, I think, even than our young women. So as a parent, you want to direct your students, right, to these faculties and staff advisors. And then the other thing I want to ask you to do is to think a lot about the ways you want to direct your students and then to uh, catch your breath a minute and think, do you need to be the one to direct your students, right? Um, sometimes we have all kinds of ambitions for our children and we want to share them and we think about ways we might have done things differently and we want to direct them. Give your child the opportunity to pick their major along the way and tell them they don't have to pick that major right out of the gate. Um, we would also encourage you to do that. Instead, let your child embrace the opportunity to dig into our liberal arts-based core curriculum the first few semesters here and try not to pressure them into a, their major selection at all. Let them find their way. Certainly, I would tell you all, if students have a penchant for business, they should take math and calculus their first year, for example. But we also want them to try out anthropology and classics, too. Students have lots and lots of time here to test their, uh, the academic waters that we have provided for them, wonderful academic waters, and to figure out what they really like. And equally important, what they do not like, because that matters too. And then they can declare their major in the spring semester of their sophomore year. Students do receive an incredible network of advising and support all along the way. Each student right out the gate, as uh, we were talking about, has an academic advisor. They'll meet that academic advisor on Friday. And I'm particularly excited about the partnership we've been able to form with Residence Life and Housing and academics to be able to provide that academic advising within the first year residences. It's a powerful, powerful step for us and really, really important. So your student will meet that advisor on Friday and that academic advisor will support your child's academic experiences and your child for their first 18 months at Wake Forest and usually beyond that because they establish a special relationship and that academic advisor will always be looking out wanting to support your student, helping them find the resources that they need as represented here uh, and helping them be successful academically and personally. Students also, every single student, will be assigned a counselor out of the Office of Academic Advising, and they can get constant support and advice there as well. The counselor will help your student through every kind of academic question they might encounter, whether it's about what might now happen right now, about AP credit or pass-fail or add drop deadlines, etc. And they will help these students if they find themselves in academic trouble and send them to the right places so that they can really get at some of the challenges that they're experiencing experiencing. The counselors are deeply attuned to students' personal needs too, and they'll help these students find their way to the University Counseling Center, uh, to the Learning and Access, uh, it's the Center for Learning, Access, and Student Success as well. In addition to the faculty advisor, in addition to our academic counselors, we also have tutoring centers, support centers. So we have a writing center, we have a math center, we have a chemistry center. They are staffed by both staff and faculty and also by student tutors. And these student tutors are particularly committed because they have the experience maybe of not quite getting calculus that first time out, going to the center and really learning it. And they want to give back as juniors and seniors with with, uh, with when, and helping first year students and second year students especially. We have our faculty fellows that Matt talked about as well. 
Um, in sophomore year, our students then pick their, uh, their major selection, second semester as I stated, and they get their major advisor too. So what you're seeing is a layering of academic support. The academic support of the faculty advisor, the lower division advisor, the academic support of their counselor, and then the academic support of their major advisor as well. So your students are going to have a host of wise, caring faculty and staff. And then they're also going to have the faculty who are teaching their courses. Your students in their first year seminar will have 16 students in their class and one faculty member. That faculty member will know your students really, really well. I've been a, I've taught first year seminars many, many years now, and I become very close to those 16 students. I know them and follow them and support them across their four years at Wake Forest. And at this point, now I'm going to their weddings and welcoming their, <laughs> not quite welcoming their children here to Wake Forest, but welcoming their children into the world. There's all kinds of support sources I could go on and on, I'll just mention a couple more. All our faculty provide office hours for their students. So please, please encourage your students to go to the office hours, to meet their faculty members, to talk about what they're learning and excited about in the courses. And then our entire faculty and staff in the ZSR library provide both formal training in the form of uh, four credit courses and informal support too on all kinds of research and the ways to really learn and use information uh, in their classes and beyond. Another aspect of Wake Forest that I think is really special is most schools, most other schools, do boast opportunities for undergraduate research, but it's typically in the student's senior year. We are very, very committed to giving students opportunities for experiential learning beginning their first year. And there are ways for students to do this. They get to know their faculty members in their, uh, in their science courses and can get some experience in their labs. We also have a one and a half credit course for students interested in research to take and learn about all the sciences and lab opportunities there. Faculty are eager in the humanities and social sciences to work with students who are interested in research as well. So it's another place to encourage your students to think about uh, if they're discovering a particular discipline to go and do some research there. We also have an undergraduate research center called Eureka for short with lots of opportunities for student research. We also love to encourage our students to engage in global experiences, so all our students can begin exploring study abroad opportunities for a semester, a summer, or a spring with a terrific staff in the Office of Global, global Programs and Studies. I'm especially delighted to share that those of you whose students are first-generation college goers have a special system here for navigating academics and life at Wake Forest, and that's another really important academic and personal support system. And for those of you who are parents of student athletes, know we have an incredible student athlete academic advising program as well. Finally, I could go on and on about these resources, you can tell. Uh, <laughs> finally, please know that Wake Forest is committed to helping all our students find meaningful career paths and good first jobs all along the way. So your students will learn all about uh, what is in store for them, really about ways of connecting their personal and professional interests through the Office of Personal and Career Development. They'll learn about that this week in orientation, and they'll have access to the OPCD, including a series of courses beginning in their first year and all across their four years at Wake. So we're there, lots of resources to help our students engage in academics. Thank you, Provost Kowalski. We, we know that students getting engaged on campus is an important part, a key part in their sense of belonging. Um, Dr. Kid Brown, could you talk a little bit about how we help students find their place at Wake Forest? Happy to, and I'll just say that I feel like Provost Gillespie just dropped the mic. <laughs> all, all the resources that are available to students. So hopefully y'all are taking notes because there, there are just so many. But belonging is such an important part of the college experience, and I think we can all attest to being in a new place and um, how important it is to find our sense of place. And so that's something we take really seriously. And then I'm leaned into that a little bit more, especially as a new person who's also learning Wake Forest. And so um, I want to first just define what belonging is to me um, at Wake Forest. You get to, our students get to define it. We've talked a lot about curiosity and leaning into that, but I really think about belonging not as fitting in. I think that's maybe a place that we go to in our brain is how do I fit into a place? How do I buy a gold and black and just sort of blend in? And I shared the same thing with your student. 
it's not about fitting in. Belonging is finding your special place. It's thinking about what are my unique strengths and talents and interests and how do I bring those to a place to make that place better. And so as we're talking about belonging, we're not looking for your student to fit in. We're looking for them to find their, their special puzzle piece within this great university. And so um, that's something that I'm really passionate about. And that occurs in a lot of different ways. Um, you've heard about engagement and belonging even from undergraduate research and students studying abroad. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be a place that falls within campus life, but we certainly facilitate that. One of those places is the Office of Student Engagement. And so as, as your student um, hears about registered student organizations, that's really the hub of student engagement. So there are more than 200 student organizations for your student to join and be a part of, and they will experience an organization fair next week. Um, and so they will, Betsy encourages them to take a lap first. Um, so don't pick up every single thing and sign up because then that means you get a lot of email. So encourage them to take a lap and then maybe go back through and be a bit more selective about the things they're interested in. But that is also something that we um, make really easy for them, especially as a new student. So they don't even have to go to the Office of Student Engagement necessarily. The, student, the Office of Student Engagement will come to them in the form of an organization fair. And within those student organizations, there are academically focused organizations, there are organizations focused on interests, and if there's something that your student looks through the list and says, you know, I'm not seeing anything here, they can form their own student organization. That's the beauty of a college campus, and many of you have experienced that in your own um, college experience. We also have fraternities and sororities among three councils, so if your students are interested in that, the Center for Student Engagement is also where they'll go to find that information. Our first year students who are interested in Panhellenic or IFC have that opportunity to join in the spring semester. And then our students who are interested in culturally based student organizations, those intake processes happen throughout the year. So there are a lot of opportunities as it relates to that. Um, I know that many of us can attest to our own college experiences and probably you is you just need to find a place. You know, um, Maya Angelou talked about belonging to yourself first and being com confident in yourself and then finding belongingness um, in others. And so we really encourage that. Another place that uh, Provost Gillespie touched on a little bit is the Center for uh, Civic and Community Engagement is another place um, many of you may be familiar with. Hit the Bricks, uh, that's an event that I'm really excited to see for the first time, my first time this fall. But the Brian Piccolo Center Research Fund is, is an, a great way that our students really engage and we actually get a chance to talk to them in the morning. But um, many campuses, I've been on, I've served on several university campuses and they will tout signature events um, or traditions in the form of signature events. Our traditions actually are really philanthropic in nature, and so that's something that we're really proud of on our campus, so your students will have opportunities to engage um, in those sorts of things through uh, the CCE, as we call it. Campus Kitchen is another opportunity there, and also civic and democratic engagement. So this is a place that we want our students to engage in dissonance they will not all agree, and that's okay. But we wanna facilitate those opportunities for students to connect across differences and similarities, and there's a lot of noise politically, and we wanna provide the space for them to be able to talk about that and to gain those skills uh, around healthy disagreements. Also, um, Provost Gillespie mentioned study abroad. I just wanna highlight that again. That's a great opportunity for students to find connection um, and also uh, undergraduate research. The things that I've talked about have been very structured in nature, meaning joining a student organization or being a part of, of a research opportunity. But there's also great organic opportunities on our campus to engage. So taking a faculty member up on their office hours or swinging by one of our offices. I invite students as often as I can to join me for lunch or coffee or a lap around the plaza. So there's some really unique opportunities. President Winty said Wake Forest is special. And I think that's what we're all getting at, you know, when we say that, that this really is a unique place for our students to find their sense of place. And so those relationships happen. I do want to highlight a couple of things that, that we started this past semester um, for engagement. Just because our students, I want to tell a quick funny story, but I ran into a student at a local grocery store 
It's not a paid partnership, so I won't say which one. Um, <laughs> but they just sort of stopped. And they were like, Dr. Shea's at the grocery store. I'm like, yes, I buy groceries. So a lot of times they see us on stages or behind, um, you know, microphones, and they don't know that we are, you know, we're, we're full humans too. And so being able to take in a cup of coffee together, those are the, the moments where I think it just humanizes the experience for our students, so we really want to do that. But one of those ways is President Winty and I started a, an initi initiative called Golden Black Chats, and we will host these each month um, in the fall and spring, and it's an open invitation for your students to come and share with us. We don't always ask um, only, you know, what's going wrong. We actually start with what's going right. What do you enjoy about your experience? But also, don't be shy about telling us what we need to improve upon so that we can make this experience the best one it can be. And then we also do lighter events like Wake Up Wednesday. I love a pun, so we use our name for some coffee, a mid midweek coffee treat. And many of my colleagues on the stage have joined me for those, but it's a midweek check-in just to say, how's your week going? If it's midterms, then we can check in about that and provide those resources on the spot. And similarly, we're starting an already very popular initiative called Milkshake Monday. We like food around here. <laughs> so select, Friday, select Mondays, and all of this is announced via social media, which is another way for your student to engage. Um, so we announce it, and then they organically come out of the woodwork and uh, get a sweet treat to start their Monday. It's not every Monday before you tell them, Dr. Shea's giving out milkshakes every Monday. I don't want to start with disappointment. So it is, it is an organic thing that is announced via social media. Um, and so hopefully you'll, you're getting a sense that engagement and belonging looks lots of different ways. So it's, it can be very structured and very organized, but it can also be, hey, ask the person next to you, what's their story? And maybe that results in a lifelong friendship. Those of you who are Wake Forest alums in the room can attest or, or wherever you've made friends and made meaning in your, in your circles. So those are some of the ways that I would encourage you to think about and as students are saying, well, I'm not finding my place, help them to find one of us and we'll help them find their place. Thank you, Dr. Kid Brown. So one of the things I love about collaborating with my colleagues is they always have ways of making natural jumps to some of the things that we want to talk about. And, and Dr. Shea spoke very powerfully about a sense of belonging. Um, one of the strengths of building off of the idea of belonging is Wake Forest's commitment to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And I'd like to invite Dr. Vialba to give just a little taste of that for um, how that manifests at Wake Forest through the work of his excellent office. Thank you very much for that, Betsy. Before I go on any further, though, can I make a plug for French Fry Friday? <laughs> I'm open to that. There's a lot of sweets with the milkshakes and the coffee, but some savory, salty, salty yeah. would be good, Savory right? Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> just let me, just send me the bill and we'll take care of it, so. Um, I find it serendipitous that in some ways I'm going last, right? We've had a chance to hear what the academic mission of the institution is, the campus life mission, particularly the UCC mission and the res life and housing mission. And yet, if you think about the, the, the time that we live in as I sit next to a historian, which I find awesome, right? If you think about the times that we live in, these issues of diversity, equity and inclusion, belonging, uh, space, they're, they're so salient and relevant now, particularly in your students' lives. And the interesting and fascinating thing about diversity, equity, and inclusion is that at the end of the day, it's really complex, but it's actually not that complicated. The, the, the desire and, and wanting to uh, reach out to someone you don't know, to get to know someone or uh, about a custom you've only ever seen on TV or on TikTok, it's not a complicated decision. Most students, most adults gravitate towards wanting to learn about something that's new to them. And so for us at Wake, around inclusion and equity and diversity, for me, there's a professional response to that and there's a personal one. Professionally, there are folks like this who work with literally hundreds of thousands of colleagues to make sure that they are professionally prepared to tackle these difficult discussions in a way that 
invites students to be comfortable in their own discomfort. And that's not a bad place to be with folks who are committed to living out the motto. Prohimanitate is an incredible motto. It's also a really challenging one, one that this place has not backed away from. We've made some difficult decisions over the past few years, but ones that we're really, really proud of and ones that continue to push us. And it's always fascinating when I meet with a student or a family member or a loved one who mentions reading about a decision Wake made a few years ago about this or about naming roads for trailblazing professors. And that means something to that person. It doesn't need to mean something to everyone, but it said something that Wake devoted this intentional uh, decision making towards making some tough calls. So professionally, you've heard of some of our offices. Our particular office oversees three centers in Benson, on the third floor of Benson. Dr. Shea Kid Brown mentioned the Office of Student Engagement, that's on the third floor. But there are three offices, three centers, the Intercultural Center, the Women's Center, and the LGBTQ Plus Center that are also in that space. And they provide that programming, those places where anyone can walk into and learn more about a particular topic or just have a really great session or program. So professionally, we are the folks who work with all of these colleagues to make sure that when your students are learning more about themselves, we can meet that task and meet that challenge. Here's the other thing, though, the more personal side. And it's interesting, as I sit up here with individuals who are also confronting this wonderful, joyous, and scary challenge that is before you, we've got folks who have seniors in high school, triplets who are just learning to drive. <laughs> My son gets his driver's license in two weeks. Um, and individuals with middle school students and two younger men. We've been down these roads in both professional and personal matters. For me, it hits close to home because as a Cuban Colombian guy from Miami, I was supposed to go back home when I finished my degree and fell in love with some woman from Philadelphia who just happened to be Jewish. And now we have these three Jewish kids and our wedding was this awesome rabbi and priest who spoke Spanish, English, and Hebrew. So, <laughs> la <l'chaim>, y'all. <laughs> That's the personal side of this work at Wake. I can guarantee you two things. Your students' level of awareness for inclusion and equity will grow their level of understanding for inclusion, diversity, and equity will grow. And that's all we ask. This isn't about acceptance, this isn't about what's right or what's wrong, but it's about us being there to support them. And from our academic initiatives, to our alumni services, to everything under the sun with regards to the campus life, we really wanna make sure that they know that this is a safe place to be. And that's how we do inclusion work at Wake. So this next question came from an alumni family. Um, the vibe on campus and the family communications I've received thus far have felt very different in tone than when I attended Wake Forest. What are, the most, what, what are you most proud of regarding the changes that I'm seeing on campus and in communication styles? And what plans do you have for the future regarding the changes to make Wake even better? And I'm gonna look to Dr. Shake at Brown. So, uh, Whoever asked this question, I love this question. One, I cannot speak to the past, but I can speak to, to where we are. And what I love about, there are many things I love about Wake Forest, but what you won't hear is what some of you may have heard when you attended college, which is look to the left, look to the right. One of you will not be graduating. Like that's not motivating at all. Um, that's not any sort of, yay, let me go to class. Um, so, so what you will hear from us is look to the left, look to the right. We want to see you all on Hearn Plaza in four years. We want to see you all be successful. We want to see you thrive. We want to see you learn what it means to develop the skills around well-being and to get to know people who have a different lived experience than you. And so. I love that um, because we are not 
shying away from high expectations. We have high expectations, and a university has an incredible reputation nationally and internationally, and yet we have a consciousness of care for our students that's unmatched. And so I'm, I think that's what you've, you've probably picked up on on our communications is there's this undertone that is threaded through everything that we do. We hope that we care about them and um, we want them to be successful. We want them to find connection and those sorts of things. And so I'm really proud of that. And that's, that is a stake in the ground for us, I think, that, that we want to distinguish ourselves in that way. It also feels important to highlight this moment. Like this feels like a Wake Forest moment to me. We have a new president, we have a new provost. I'm new um, in my role. We are in a moment where COVID is becoming endemic based on everything that we're seeing and reading and learning about. And so this is a real moment in our history, I think that we'll look back on as, um, as, as uh, President Wente says, as we prepare for our third century, and y'all can do the math um, on that in the founding year. Uh, but in 12 years, we will be starting our third century as a university. And so it's a really unique time where we're gonna spend this year thinking about who do we wanna be as a university? What are the stakes in the ground? Um, as, a, as a cabinet, we talked about that just a few days ago. And so your student and you get to be a part of that. Um, we will invite them to be a part of that through, through lots of, of various iterations of, of conversations around that. So I'm really excited. Um, and there's just so much to be excited about. Um, we have all collectively come through a really tough time over the last two and a half years. And so to have a, a more routine fall where I told a family earlier, I, I really like seeing people's noses. I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't know noses were special until we couldn't see them for a while. And so we get to engage in, and be a part of that. But going, again, going back to the question, I think um, the uniqueness is that there's this, this concentration and focus on student success while also holding our students accountable and, and having high expectations, and that makes me really proud to be a part of this university. Thank you, Dr. Kid Brown. So I have the pleasure of inviting all of our panelists, starting with Dr. Clifford, and we'll move this way, to give one quick lightning round bit of advice to parents and families for this upcoming academic year for their students. Absolutely. Um, the, quick, okay. Um, focus. Uh, we've we've heard a lot. Of, I've heard the word journey several different times, and um, and I, so I'd focus on that. That and one of the a really significant researcher in higher ed, uh, Dr. Marsha Baxter Magolda, focuses on this notion of self authorship for students. That is, students being able to write their own story, and and lead their own journey. The role of of this connective tissue, this network of faculty and staff who are here to support your students is to be good company for the journey, as Dr. Magolda says. Um, and I, that's one of the, the most joyous um, parts of our work. The commencement, the, just hearing you talk about that, Shay, is such a glorious affair because we get to see the culmination of your student's journey and we get to, we know that we were, we were company with that um, and good company along their journey. So I would encourage you to find a way to enjoy the journey. You'll be in the back seat um, of that journey as your students in, in the driver's seat, you know, steering and driving and enjoying um, the twists and turns of that. But be good company for their journey um, and enjoy the ride. I love the driving references. It yeah, sounds like driver's ed is really on your, on your mind. Um, so I have, I have two things. One's for you, because we spend a lot of time talking about your student, and I just want to, um, not, that I, not that you need permission, but you need to feel what you're feeling. Like this is a big transition, and you've been along the ride with your student for 18, 19 years for the most part, for all of you, and so I think Feeling those feelings are, is important, and, and naming that um, is, is critical. So um, that's the first thing. The second thing is very practical advice, and this is to, over the next couple of days, talk to your student about your routine. So your, 
your conversations with them are changing. You are not, they're not in the same household anymore. And so what is that routine? Is it going to be a text at 8 a.m. Eastern time? Probably not because they may not be awake. But it may be a specific time that you say, you know, every day as you head to class, shoot me a text or every other day or whatever that is. But I think it's helpful to maintain a routine because when that routine's off, something else may be off. And so it's, it's a good way to just gauge, hey, I didn't get my, you know, Monday night call or whatever that is that may give you a, a sense that something else is, is changing about them and, and give you an opportunity to lean into that a little bit more. So I would encourage you to, to develop a routine with your student. That's great advice. I know you're all very, very proud of your students right now, and you should be. You should be very, very proud of your students. But I also want you to be really, really proud of your child as they go down this road, as they go on this journey, and they hit the detour, and they hit the pothole, and they take the wrong turn, and that might be a grade they didn't expect on an exam that they'd never gotten before. It might be uh, failing to turn so a paper in on time. It might be deciding that they are not going to be the fourth generation doctor in the family, and they're going to go and be an engineer instead. So please be proud proud of the ways that you are letting your child discover who they are, discern who they are, be supported by this incredible uh, university that we have here and by you. But just be proud of yourself for giving your child that option, that opportunity to learn and grow and discover and become the wonderful people they're becoming for themselves. So I lied. There's one more Spanish bit to go. <laughs> and it's funny because uh, my dad uh, used to always have all of these Colombian phrases that didn't mean a lot and yet, of course, have gotten me through a lot of years of life. So I'll say it in Spanish and then I'll translate it. And it's actually advice for both you and your student. No confundes tener miedo por tener susto. Don't confuse being afraid for being scared. Your students and you will be scared. I'm scared right now. <laughs> for the Spanish speakers out there who are like, no, that's not the way it goes. It's like this. <laughs> but it's really important to not confuse the two. When it becomes fear, when being scared becomes fear, it becomes debilitating, it becomes exhausting, and it becomes unrelenting. But if it's just being scared, you learn from that. If it's just being scared, you move on from that. If it's just being scared, you apply that lesson later. So help yourselves and help your students differentiate the two. And if you're afraid, you're afraid. That happens. And if you're afraid, Dr. Mann and I will set up shop outside. We take Blue Cross Blue Shield. I'm sure she takes more than that. <laughs> but don't confuse the two. Thanks. So hopefully repetition is helpful. You will hear the theme. The most important thing I think for your students to know before you leave campus is that you love them. Not that you love them because they're smart or you love them because they made the best grades or you love them because they're so outgoing, but just that you love the human that they are. I say that the college choice is your first big adult decision. Once you make it, everything about it you have to own. They need to own this journey. And to do that, they need to know that you love them no matter what. I had a young woman already this week in one of our sessions say, raise her hand and say, Dr. Mann, I come from a family, we don't really believe in therapy. Well, if I come talk to you, will they know? And I said, I promise you, they won't care. They won't know, but they won't care. Part of this journey is they have to try new things. They have to fail and they have to make some decisions that they'll look back in 30 years and say, oh my God, we lived through that? <laughs> That's a part of the journey. 
And it's important that they know that every choice that they face, whether they go left or right, whether it turns out well or it's an utter failure, that you will always be there. And particularly that in May, you will come back and get them. <laughs> so we enjoyed meeting you all tonight and we look forward to seeing you again then. I want to I wanna thank all of our panelists for your, your excellent advice, and, and I hope for our families in the audience that you can see that the collegiality and the teamwork and the genuine affection we have for each other, that's all very real. I promise you we're not just doing it because you're here. Um, and we have many more administrators on campus and faculty in all kinds of roles who are here to help your students. Um, again, I particularly commend the Office of Family Engagement who, who helps support our parents and families. And um, you'll be able to meet some of them at the reception, and I'll let Dr. James close. Yeah, perfect. So when I introduced myself earlier, I did not, I told you my name and my title, but I didn't tell you what I have learned. What I've learned in my 13 years here at Wake Forest, um, when I did my, my search for a job, I came onto campus and I said, wow, this is a special place. And I continue to see that on a daily basis through conversations of care for your students. Um, I have learned um, just the various ways in which folks are willing to step up to not only support each other as colleagues, but certainly most importantly to support your students. And so I hope that you will see that now and over the course of the next four years. Um, on Friday, your students will receive a pin that we want them to hold on to for the four years and wear at graduation. So we hope that you will just see that as a symbol of hope and see that as a symbol of support for this university. So a few housekeeping moments. Um, for those sitting in the balcony, we'd ask that you would come and exit through the rear side doors. Um, as we conclude, we will have a reception just out front um, of the Steps of Wake Chapel. I also want to give you a preview of tomorrow's activities accessible through our orientation app. Tomorrow morning, we will begin with a continental breakfast at 8.30 a.m. on the quad just right outside. At 9.30, we will have a brief welcome called Making of the Demon Deacon at 9.30 a.m., also on the quad. At 10.30, you'll be able to attend What to Know Before You Go for parents and families. Guests who pre-registered got an email with their respective viewing locations. You can also visit Guidebook for the link to the view of the program from the location of your choice. Lunch is on your own unless you're planning to attend any of the receptions identified in the schedule. You will have two tracks repeating at 1.15 and 2.30 p.m. Families with two people here can attend the same program or go to different ones and cover more bases. There will be a lot of open houses in the late afternoon from some of the centers we've talked about tonight. Um, and then at 5 p.m., we'll have a reception for parents and families with President Wanti. And that will happen at 5 p.m. in Farrell Hall. So let's go ahead and process outside and enjoy some re refreshments. Thanks so much. <laughs> <laughs>